Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we liberated Figaro Castle, or should I say, we unlodged it so it wasn't wedged into the underground area anymore or something like that. Well, anyway, we defeated the tentacle monster that was making the engine not work. Anyways, so if it comes up from the ground, can we still travel to the other continent? Apparently we can. Just talk to the old man as usual, and you can ride it over to the area near Kolingen, which is still the same town it used to go near before. Although the continents look differently, apparently it still works, which is nice. Now, I think before, it didn't actually go underwater, though. It went under some mountains. But if you think about it, the mountains could have just sank and you could still go under. Either way, it just takes us to the opposite desert as it did before. And Kolingen is just to our... just to the west a little bit. And that's where we want to go. Now, as I said before, it is possible to be at this point in the game and only have Edgar and Celis. Because this is, so far, the only required part that I've had to do was the whole Edgar part. This continent has new enemies. This is a Muse, which is probably the same as the Jelly or whatever the hell it was. The Flan, I think it was. And does it multiply? No, they do not multiply like Flan. Thank God, because Flans are annoying. Anyways, so we're just going to go north up here to Kolingen. And maybe this town will hold a little bit more info on some more of my character's whereabouts. Hey look, it's a... Uh, looks like a Narsh guard, right? Isn't this for people from Narsh? Yeah, but... Oh, apparently Narsh is filled with monsters, though. Nobody wants to go to a place filled with monsters. Oh. Oh, that's right. If you talk to this old lady right here, you get a flashback of how Kolingen used to look. It was so nice and peaceful. Birds flying, children frolicking, flowers blooming, and now we're in the brown shittiness. Grass barely even stays green. Instead, it's a hint of shitty green. Actually, before we head in there, I actually want to look around a little bit more and see what there is to buy. There's a real mean guy fighting at the Coliseum. Seems like he's looking for a weapon called the Striker. Huh. I want one. Unequip some party members? Oh. Uh, sure, I'll unequip everyone that's not in my party. Sure, like it matters. Um, I didn't even know you could do that, actually. Wait, if that guy's here, isn't that the guy that was on our airship that let us do that? Looks like that town, or that town, that house is still destroyed. Okay, wait, so this is the town that had, this is Locke's old house, right? Yeah. This is the town that used to be Locke's hometown, or I should say, this is Locke's hometown. The place where, I think this is the house over here that under, underneath was his lady love was uh, passed out down here. Yep, she's still there. He's been searching the world for that fable treasure. Oh. Apparently, Locke is still out there, looking for that treasure. There's a hint. Hint, hint. You can't beat the game without getting Locke back in your party, just so you know. Locke is absolutely necessary. So let's just head in the inn. I, I teased you enough. Look who's in the inn, guys. It's Setzer, my least favorite character to use in the whole game. Setzer! You're alive. You damn skippy, I'm alive. Come along with us. We're after Kefka. Whew. I don't know if I have it in me anymore. What are you saying? I'm just a gambler. I just want to be left alone. This world is too chaotic for me. What's worse, I've lost my wings. Yeah, his airship did get beat the fuck up. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. But maybe he can be swayed by the Maria twin, Celis. But before the world collapsed, you fought with all your heart. You were absolutely fearless. That was then. We can never have that world back. You want to live in this world as it is? No? Then do something about it. <laughs> and that's all it takes. Some wise words from a hot lady. And it seems like Setzer's already on board. <laughs> Alright, you win. I'm starting to feel lucky again. And the airship music kicks in. Thanks, I needed that. Now, let's go visit Daryl's tomb. Who's Daryl? Nah, we should know who Daryl is. We got a bit of a flashback earlier about Daryl. Well, a little bit. Very small. We're gonna get us another one. Airship, that is. Oh, oh is that where the is that where you hit it? Or I should say, is that where Daryl hit it? Daryl hit her airship in her tomb? <laughs> that makes sense. Nah, it's more like Setzer hit it there. Anyway, the tomb is just west of Kolingen. So that'll be our next main destination. Awesome. But before we head there, um, I actually do want to hit the item weapon shops. 
because I think there is new equipment here as well. Yes, equipment for Setzer. We do want a dice and we do want a trump. Two items we definitely want. In fact, I think we want two trumps if I'm not mistaken. Um, do we want two of them? I'm trying to remember. Do we want two trumps? Yeah. Two trumps. Now, there's a reason I want two trumps, and I'll completely explain it when I get a moment. Um, I know I'm out of money, so I can't buy any armor, which I probably do want to buy some armor. But I guess we're just going to have to go with the armor that we have. Now, as you, as, as you saw, we have to go west to the Daryl's Tomb, but we're not going to do that yet. Actually, before we get any further than that, we got to go to Setzer and equip some stuff, because he can't be walking around all naked and shit. I'm just going to give him the wall ring, and, uh, I don't know, just give him something. He's actually a perfect person to put the sprint shoes on, just so, you know what, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the sprint shoes on him. He's a perfect person, because that way, because <laughs> I don't really know what to put on him other than supplemental stuff. Um, but he mainly just needs equipment because he's bare ass right now. And he'll, yeah, he can use the trump. That's fine. Put him in the back row. In fact, take the trump off for now because that, what trump does is it does auto, it kills, it gives you like auto kill. And, I mean, auto kill is awesome and everything, but a lot of enemies around here are immune to it. So if you use it, it's kind of pointless. Okay, we got a new enemy, Harpy Eye, which is actually a really cool looking bird. Um... As you can see, though, I was not heading toward Daryl's tomb, and you might be wondering why. Well, if you remember, north of Kolingen was a guy who was complaining that, or not complaining, but he was all ambitious and said he wanted to build a coliseum. Well, if you head to where his house was, you can see there's a big-ass fucking mansion over here now, which is now known as the Coliseum. Okay, then. The more precious item wagered, the better your prize will be. So that is basically how... Wait a second... Ultros, what are you doing here? Look at me, I'm a receptionist. <laughs> now you better watch where you bet, or Master Chupon will just come and take it from you. Okay then, well that's pretty much how this place works. You bet an item, and you win an item back. Simple as that. And usually the item is better than the one that you wagered. Uh-huh. Okay, well that's a... That, that clue that the, the soldier just told me is something you can't... It's, like, completely pointless. Okay, and that guy just gave us the other clue about, the, about this... Um, about this Coliseum. Is that you can only fight one-on-one -on -one battles. So we're going to rest up real quick, just so everyone's all healed up. And then we're going to prep for our first battle, which is actually going to be the most simplest of battles. It's going to be a, more of a demonstration of how this place works. Now, you can wager, like, weak-ass items and fight, like, weak-ass enemies, but there's really no point in doing that. Um, it's way more worth it to actually do certain ha fight with certain setups. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the dice on Setzer, which is a very random item. But that's okay, because we'll, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be fighting fighting some random ass kind of battles here in a second. Okay, I thought this was I guess the weapon shops only on the other side. I thought for a second I thought they were attached. Anyway, let's go to this side real quick and. Um, oh, look at Siegfried's bitch ass. Someone's been pretending to be me. Don't be fooled. Oh, so Siegfried and Siegfried are two different people, aren't they? Okay, so if we want to fight in the Coliseum, this is how we do it. With pleasure. I'll explain it to you as we go. We pick an item to wager. Now, to make it simple, we're just going to start by wagering a Phoenix down. And if we do that, we're going to fight a Cactrot, which is basically a Cact... What are they usually called? Cactuars? The best way to fight a Cactrot is to use Setzer. Cactuars can be quite the bitch. Alright, and so we watch the battle commence. And we win. Yes, it's that easy. If you fight a Cactrot, make sure you are equipped with Setzer having dice. It's an auto win every time. And for winning, if you didn't see, we got Magicite, which is just, you know, the item that casts random a random summon. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to re-equip Sabin. And we want to give him the double... Wait, okay, we already have double fire knuckle, my bad. Uh, but we, what we want to change is we want to give him the ribbon. Because he, because the next one we're going to do is actually going to have a... The enemy's going to try and do status effects, which would be really irritating. But we don't want that. Otherwise, I think we just stick with this setup. Double, double fire knuckle for sure. And now we're going to wager. 
Let's see, what are we wagering this time? We are going to wager the reason why I bought a few extras. If you recall, I told you I bought a few extras for a reason. And that reason is... Where the hell are they? I passed them completely. Okay, there they are. Flame Saber. The reason why? So we can fight Evil Oscar. Which is basically a an annoying-ass Marlboro. The reason why we have Ribbon on. But with Fire Knuckles, we should be completely safe. And Sabin is just going to do what he do. Now, Suplex. I don't know why you're doing that, sir. You should be using Fire Knuckles. You'll be doing way more damage. But the biggest downside to these Coliseum battles is you do not get to decide what to do in these battles. You just have to watch them happen. So whatever item you wager, you lose. Even if you win the battle, you lose that item. Just know that. So if you're wagering an item, make sure it's an item you're not caring if you don't get back. As you can see, Evil Oscar, really easy. And for winning, we got an Ogre Nyx, which is actually a really cool sword. But we'll be dealing with that in a minute. Next thing we want to do is re-equip Sabin again. Now this time, we're going to pretty much same setup, but we're going to go double Poison Claw, because Poison is going to be what this next enemy's weak to. And in fact, uh, we're going to change his other relic now. We're not going to be worried about getting hit with uh, status effects in this one. This time, we're going to set it up so we can just attack more often by having the black belt on so you get counter attacks in. And damn it, now I have to re-equip the poison claw because of auto equip. That's fine. All right, and I think Sabin is ready already to handle the next battle. Yes, he is. Okay. So this time we want to bet a way more higher stakes item. This time we're going to be betting the, uh, an actual... Oh, where are, where are those weapons at? Where are they at? I thought... I thought they would be... Ah, oh, here they are. They're under knife. That's weird. Why are sword these swords under knife? Weird. Anyway, we want to bet the Mirasame, which is one of Cyan's best weapons. But it doesn't matter, because when we win, we're going to get a better item. And if you do notice, up on the left side, you'll see the item you're going to win if you win the battle. Now, this one's a lot more higher stakes. There's a chance you might not win this. But I think after those two attacks right there, we're good. Yep, we're good. Got to be really careful there because that guy can almost kill Sabin in one hit. But if Sabin gets two turns because of the black belt, easy victory. And for winning, we get the Aura, which is actually the Masamune, if you were if you were wondering. Um, we won't be needing it until we get Cyan back, but for now, it's an awesome item to have. Okay, next thing we want to do, we want to equip up Setzer. We want to give him... Actually, we want to switch a few things around. We want to switch up... We take the Genji Glove off of him... And then we'll go to hit, we'll go to Setzer and we'll switch his wall ring to the Genji glove that I just took off. In fact, do I have an extra Genji glove? I think I did have an extra one. I didn't have to take one off of Sabin. Anyways, um, yeah, just that. And you know, we'll give him the running shoes so he goes faster, just for the hell of it. And double Trump. That's exactly what we want. And we should be able to handle it with that party right there. Um, I should I should probably be saving it between these battles, but I'm pretty sure I can win. If I happen to lose, it's going to suck. I think I might, after this one, save it after I try again. But anyways, we're going to bet the almighty ribbon. Yes! Why are we betting the ribbon, an item that is very useful in this game? Well, it's going to lead us on a path to get an even better item that I will be using a lot more. And ribbons, while are fan freaking fantastic... Um, you never really need to guard from all status ailments at once, like, ever. So just know that. If you just stick to using the rings when you know what status ailments you need to block, just do that. But yeah, the best way to kill that guy is auto death attacks, and for winning you get the gold hairpin. Auto death attacks are the way to go in that battle. So we get the gold hairpin, right? And remember the gold hairpin from earlier in the game? The gold hairpin was the one that, uh, allowed us to... Uh, it's, the, it's the one that we couldn't get after Mog. Remember when we saved Mog and let the werewolf fall? If we would have saved the werewolf, we would have got a golden hairpin. But now we just got another one. And if you have a lot of ribbons, you can get as many golden hairpins as you want. But as for me, well, I just got rid of my ribbon. Which just occurred to me I just got rid of my ribbon. Oh, God. And now I can't use it to fight. Oh, God. This is going to change up my strategy a little bit, isn't it? Okay, well, since I got rid of my ribbon, since I only had one, I kind of wish I had another one. There's a, there's a time when you can get some more ribbons later. But since I don't have another one, um... who do I want to go that one? I'm trying to think what status effect I'm worried about here. 
You know what? Um, I'll be right back. All right, so here we are back in the Coliseum real quick. I wanted to just figure out what I wanted to do with this next battle. See, I wanted to have the ribbon because we're going to fight uh, the same enemy, we are, another enemy that we already actually just fought, um, which is the one where I had the ribbon on, which was the evil Oscar guy, which looks like a Marlboro. Um, we're going to bet the golden hairpin that we just won, wherever that went. Hopefully it's at the bottom. Is it at the very bottom? Probably not. Damn it, I need to sort this shit. Where the fuck is the golden hairpin? Come on, gold hairpin. Quit being elusive. Where are you at? Not the gale hairpin, the gold hairpin, damn it. Hold on. Let me rearrange this shit. How come I can't find that shit? Alright, now that it's arranged, now let's do it. Come on, gold hairpin, where are you at? Now, is it a relic? That might be my thing. I thought it was a helmet, but it might be a relic. Gold hairpin, gold hairpin. Okay, it's not a it's not a helmet. It's definitely a relic. It's not the gale hairpin. It's the gold hairpin, damn it. There it is. It's the fucking last one now. Okay. See, as you can see, it does have MP consumed. And we're going to get rid of it already, yeah. But that's because I want the dragon horn, which is a freaking amazing... It's an amazing relic, and I want it right now. So let's hopefully win this battle even without the ribbon. I went ahead and put on a different thing called the amulet on Sabin, hoping that that'll actually save me from a lot of these status effects that he's about to hit me with. And, nope, I'm screwed. Yep, I'm pretty screwed now. Uh, I might have to reload this and try again with a different set of, uh... Oh, actually, that works. If you get sneezed out of the arena, that actually works for me. You do not lose your... You do not lose the thing you get bet. So if you want to believe me, there you go. If you get sneezed out of the arena, you do not lose your the item that you bet. You get to get it right back. So that's one positive note. Now, I did not know that that thing did imp. Imp and sleep is definitely not good. Um, I, I mean, I imagine there's other status effects that that thing also does. But imp and sleep, pretty much game over. So... Hmm, we might not be able to get that amp, that uh, relic right now after all because of my only having one ribbon. You know what? Let's try doing it with a white cape and see what happens. If I get the same result, then I'll just have to come back and do this later. We will be coming back to this later. This is actually the last thing I wanted to try, like the last battle I wanted to try. If I can't get it, then so be it. We'll do this later. But I just wanted to try get it now because it's actually a really useful relic that I was planning on using soon. Dang, and he's going to sneeze me right out of the arena. Punk ass. Okay, well, if that happens, you could just try again real quick. Because sometimes that'll happen. You'll get sneezed out so fast you don't even get a chance to win. Luckily, you don't lose your item if that happens. And like I said, if I do happen to lose my item, well, I'll just reset. Because I did save it. Like I said, I should have saved it, so I did go save it. It's one of the things I went and did. Damn it, quit sneezing me right out of the arena, a-hole. Seriously, quit it. I just want, I just want to win the item. I just want to, I just want it. Let me win it. He doesn't want to do his little move. He just wants to sneeze me out. What a bastard. Whatever, I'm just going to keep trying. Oh yeah, go ahead and do poison. Go ahead. Poison all day, sir. Come on, double fire knuckle. Oh, come on. I was just hoping that that fire knuckle would hit twice. That'd be amazing. Hit him again, hit him again, hit him again. Okay, cool. He could do poison all day. Go ahead. I don't even care. I think I'm going to kill him right here anyway, so... We're going to get our... Yeah, we're going to get our dragon horn. Fantastic. So we got the dragon horn, and what does the dragon horn do? Well, let's get this poison off me so I can stop blurring. Dragon horn. Let's read it off, shall we? Where did it go? Why does it always got to go somewhere? Makes jump continuous. Yup, you read that right. Makes jump continuous, which is a fantastic thing to put on Edgar and or Mog if you can get two of them because goddamn now I might have to put you might have to put the boots on with it so you can jump at all let's go ahead and test it out and see I'm just gonna see if you have to have the boots on I'm going to defend defend I just want to see if you have to have the boots on to even do jump okay yeah so you have to have the dragon boots on with the horn to even do jump but when you put that you, and combine the fact that dragon boots 
when you use jump, it makes your attack double if you have spears. So double attack up to, I think, four to six times. That's what jump continuously means. In fact, I would love to show it off real quick just to show you how awesome it is. We're going to be using it quite a bit here in a little while. Like in the next episode, more than likely. Because this is actually going to be the end of the episode, obviously. I didn't expect the call scene to take me that long. But my failures and annoyances made it the way it is. Anyway, check this out. Jump, baby. Boom. Watch this happen. Watch it happen. I'm going to wait till it happens. Come on. Defend. I want to see it. I want to see the fruits of my labor. Make it worth it, baby. Make it worth it. Come on. Yeah, one. Two. Oh, he only did it twice. That's all right. It can be more than... It can be up to four times. It's not always. Anyways, it's freaking awesome. Put it that way. I just did 4,000 damage like nothing. All right, so next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, we're going to head over to Daryl's tomb. And since we did a Coliseum this episode, we finish it off with a quote from my favorite movie. Are you not entertained? Peace. Gladiator is one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite movie of all time. Go ahead and let me know what your favorite movie is or are. Go for it.